Cheol, South Korea has emerged with one of Asia's leading economies. Its booming industrial growth has produced unparalleled new wealth, but at a terrific cost of toxic pollution, urban sprawl, and mounting nuclear waste. In 1965, there were only 40,000 cars in Korea, but now in 1995, there are 7 million cars. Seoul's population has grown to 11 million people, and the air pollution is one of the worst in the world. Industrial development that took 200 years in Europe has surged through South Korea in 30 years. Our country once had the clearest water and we had no problem drinking it. Now we cannot drink the tap water because it is no longer safe. Cheo is Secretary General of the Korean Federation for Environmental Movement, KFEM, an umbrella group of 20,000 people whose common goal is to protect the environment. The main reason I got involved in the environmental movement was to play a role in bringing democracy to the nation and to help those without a voice, the victims of pollution. He began early and at his peril as a high school student activist opposing South Korea's military government. He was later expelled from college, drafted, arrested, tortured, and imprisoned for nearly six years. While in prison, he began reading environmental books. At the time I was in jail, the Korean government had no interest in pollution issues. Since Korea had no experts in those areas, they did not understand what kind of books these were. Upon release, Che Yul organized Korea's first protests against toxic pollution. Environmental issues helped mobilize citizens for what evolved into the pro-democracy movement of 1987. Korea's military government fell. In the words of freely elected Congressman Lee Bu Young, Che Yul was the first. No Korean before him had addressed environmental problems. Lee understands Che Yul's insistence that informed citizens be able to act upon environmental protection law. Uh, if you uh, wants to rehabilitate a democracy, uh, you have to walk for the conservation of the environment. That democratic process was very much in evidence recently. Residents asked Che Yul to help them stop establishment of a nuclear waste dump on their small island. As Che Yul put it, I will help because the government hasn't listened to the people from the island. They made a secret decision. Half the island's population returned with Che Yul to the mainland. They would protest in Seoul. 40% of South Korea's power is nuclear generated. Che Yul is concerned the country is betting too much of its future on nuclear power. Like other nations, Korea has been unable to find storage for the waste its plants generate. The islanders have no wish to become the solution to that storage problem. Their protest is met by riot police. Che Yul attempts to calm the situation. Over the past 19 years, he has won respect from people on all sides of environmental issues. His organization publishes an environmental education series in the Korean Daily News. They conduct river watch programs, testing water quality in the smog-shrouded, heavily polluted Han River, the source of Seoul's drinking water. There is much to be done. But though Che Yul started alone, he now feels 90% of South Korea is very positive about his work. As he expresses it, I have grandmothers, grandfathers, college students, people working in factories and companies all involved. I hope the next century will know a more saving age of conservation. My father was a general. He was adamantly against my involvement when I was expelled from school but my father gradually changed his mind. Once I started this movement, he said, why don't you go all the way? For Outstanding Environmental Achievement in Asia, a 1995 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Che Yul of Seoul, South Korea.